As promised, if we consider a car that starts from rest at a red light, the light turns green, so time t equals zero, the car speeds up for five seconds, then goes at constant speed for five seconds, and then comes to rest over another five seconds as the car approaches a stop sign. The position versus time graph of the car might look like this. Note the five second segments have been marked for your convenience. So for the first five seconds, we were speeding up, the next five seconds we had constant speed, and the next five seconds we came to a stop. The slope, here's how I know that just by looking at the graph. The graph's uh, slope starts at zero and is becoming more positive. If you were to hold up a ruler to this line, you'll be able to see that. Therefore, the velocity graph's value starts at zero and is becoming more positive. Now the slope is constant and positive. Velocity graph's value is now constant and positive. Slope is going from positive to zero. As we get towards this 15 second mark, the slope here is flat, and a flat slope means zero slope. If we have zero slope on a position versus time graph, what is our velocity? It's going towards zero. At 15 seconds, we, we were at zero. At 15 seconds on a velocity versus time graph, this is zero. Changing velocity versus time into acceleration versus time. To change velocity versus time graph into an acceleration versus time graph, remember the slope of velocity graph is acceleration. Remember that the slope of a velocity graph is acceleration. Remember, the slope of a velocity graph is acceleration. If the slope of velocity versus time is positive, acceleration is positive. If the slope of velocity versus time graph is negative, acceleration is negative. If the slope of velocity versus time graph is zero, You'll never believe this. Acceleration is zero. Here we go. Put me right up there at the top. Let's return to our car speeding up and then slowing down. During the first segment, the velocity graph has a constant positive slope. Constant positive acceleration. The second segment, the velocity graph has zero slope. Flat line, zero slope, zero slope. Zero acceleration. This uh, vertical connector is not required. Sometimes you'll see just a straight line and then a straight line down here. Uh, but other times you'll see this vertical connector just uh, making all of the graph continuous. Now the last segment, we have the velocity graph, which has a negative slope. Negative acceleration. Boom. During the same segment, the acceleration graph has a negative value. And again, vertical connector not required. Here is that motion in a cartoon. You see how the velocity vector increases as the car speeds up. This is the velocity vector acceleration vector. No acceleration. Big acceleration in the opposite direction. If we're going if we have acceleration in the opposite direction of velocity, we're going to slow down. Notice how the position graph slope increases as the car speeds up and then decreases as the car slows down. So this is increasing constant velocity, and then we're going to be decreasing our slope. So our position is not changing as rapidly as it was down here. Notice how the car never moved backwards, so the velocity is always positive. Even though we have this 
velocity approaching zero, we don't ever cross. That anytime you cross the velocity's x-axis on a velocity versus time graph, that means the object has changed directions. That is it. That is the only way you will represent an object changing directions is by going into negative world on the velocity versus time graph or um, seeing stuff in the negative world on velocity versus time graph tells you that it's moving in the opposite direction. Notice how acceleration is positive in the same direction as the car speeds up and the car slows down. And uh, opposite as the car slows down, sorry. Acceleration forward, then it's zero acceleration, and then acceleration backwards. Opposite direction. Velocity and acceleration in opposite directions, slowing down.